And are we being filmed this evening? And who are we filming for? Uh, North Street Neighborhood Association. Thank you. Um, and Karen is here, so let's, and I assume she's here for the cellular planning update. Make a motion that we take item number, information number one out of order. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Karen. Actually, this, it's not my presentation, I'm here. I'll, I'll start. Okay. okay. I'll be happy to start. Karen is here to make sure they don't say it's wrong <laughs> to correct all my mistakes. Um, we've been, um, Karen and I did David Pellegro a meeting with, um, we had a meeting recently with MJ and David um, took them over sort of the solid waste collection alternatives uh, after my proposals. So um, at the request of um, the two board members, we sent around the information sort of describing the options that are being considered right now and some of the cost information. Um, we, we, we started working on updated costs for the options based on a couple of things, based on the hauling bids that we opened about a month ago, which gives us actual disposal costs that we, we would incur in our out-of-town facility, and other other sort of costs that, that could be updated in here. And then um, we, we revised some of the revenue numbers based on uh, numbers that we're seeing related to bag sales and vehicle permits. Um, so there's been some changes relative to the number of uh, customer customers that we have um, for vehicle permits. The sales have been down. Um, so we sort of shifted uh, through these numbers and updated them and backed into um, a number for discussion in terms of what a residential permit fee in the future would be back a couple of years ago when we met with the Mayor Higgins' Solid Waste Task Force, we had a, there was a number of about $75 per year that was was discussed in the analysis that was, was done at that time. And depending on which option you look at now, um, the number is somewhere in the $55 to $65 range, just based on kind of the discussions as they've been evolving. Um, the options, I don't know how much time we want to to spend time going through these, but the options are all based on um, maintaining the city's um, drop-off capability for residential use. So the Mayor Higgins' task force recommendation was to sort of maintain a status quo style collection in that curbside, but keep the drop-off the drop-offs open. Um, so the options that um, we're looking at are, um, one is to maintain Locust Street and Glendale uh, transfer stations and the hours would be slightly different. Um, it would be Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday at Locust Street, and Tuesday and Saturday at Glendale Road, sort of a reduced hour type of scenario. Um, option two was to maintain the Locust Street transfer station um, pretty much as it is, and we would uh, keep Glendale transfer station open for difficult, difficult to manage waste only. I um, mean, the hours there that we were basing costs on were Locust Street would be open Monday through Saturday, and Glendale Road would only be open on, on Saturdays to handle um, some of these difficult to manage types of materials that we handle there now. <coughs> and then the last option that we looked at was uh, just having the Locust Street transfer station only, and, and Glendale would be closed for all activity except for leaving yard waste. So I feel like the the discussions are, I guess in my opinion, um, and the board members can weigh in with their own thoughts, are, are uh, kind of evolving to the point where decisions need to be made about specific programs that um, the city will offer and what the, um, what the arrangements will be to try to cover the cost of those services. Um, there's probably a couple different ways to do that in terms of vehicle permits and, and, um, and bag pricing. Um, it's a really rough Probably somewhat disjointed overview. Um, do you have to answer questions, or if David and MJ want to add anything, or obviously Karen can um, respond to any questions as well. Right now. I think one of the things that we need to be mindful of is, is that we're talking about eliminating commercial operations as part of our solid waste management piece here, that it's a residential program when the landfill closes down. And I think that we, we might actually want to have some conversations about how that might work or how what impact 
impact it might have on small businesses in town. And what came up the other day was uh, Jean Tacey raised the question about how do, what are the landscapers, what the landscaping business is going to do in terms of yard and leaf waste when they might not have the option of dumping that stuff every day of the week at the mm -hmm. landfill. Mm -hmm. Wasn't the third option that Bloomdale would remain open for yard waste? On Saturday? That was a residential. No, the yard waste. Not commercial. That's right. Okay. How many landscapers do we know? How many landscapers are customers now? I could, I could find find out. And I'm I'm thinking it's in the range of two dozen. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, I mean, some of them are really small. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do we have any idea the volume that these are there? Yes, I could tell you that too. You know, commercial yard and leaf waste are going to. I would wonder why we wanted to do that. Why the city should provide that service, and whether someone else would pick up that. A private entity would pick up that. Like a farm. Sort of, mm -hmm. Yeah. I or mean, what is it? Didn't they do something similar to that over at um, off of Bird's Pit Road? Smithville. Yeah. Do they still do that there? Uh, no. Do they? Can't. Uh, I think they're pyramid laps up there. They, uh, they, they could do it. yard and leaf waste very easily. But they, when it was really being operated, they were expecting commercial. Yeah. Food waste. Yeah. Or I know they have a, a screen that goes over there once in a while, like once a year maybe. <coughs> what, so what does it Are the commercial uh, landscapers paying a fee for what they've done? They are. $25 per ton, oh, which sorry. is kind of a break even cost. It probably would be a little bit more than that actually now. But then they only calculated it. I mean, the, the dynamics will change. You have to think that there's a lot of material coming in now that gets chipped or composted and used. We've been using all the material that's been coming in related to the landfill operation. So making sources of uh, topsoil for landfill capping projects and managing, there's been some benefit to taking the material in because we have a home for it. But if we continue, we're wondering just with the residential use, the city takes in a bunch of material and we compost it then we have to find a use for all that material. Mm -hmm. The highway department, I'm sure, can use some of it. Um, in terms of the overall volume, though, you know, you, you reach a point where you have to start finding a home for the material in terms of marketing or redistribution or something like that. So there's sort of another end of it that needs to be, you need to pay attention to. Or and a again, charge a price. Yeah, yeah, charge, yeah, charge a price. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there were, I don't know how many hundred plus communities across the Commonwealth that closed the landfills in the 90s and everybody had this question. Mm -hmm. What are we doing with this? And the vast majority of towns, and Karen can correct me if I'm wrong, <coughs> are not dealing with commercial um, wood waste and things like that. They're just, not, they're just not doing it. So there's a sort of a, a record of private entities finding ways to deal with you know, someone stepping up and saying, well, I can make a dollar if I, you know, if I start going as Willards or somebody, you know, be interested in doing it or, you know, whatever. Well, there's a market, it'll, the void will be filled. I guess the question is, should the city fill it? So did the Solid Waste uh, Committee take this to the City Council on, at the Monday meeting? At the, at the last meeting? No, mm -hmm. we no. just, I mean, we just got the material, the uh, okay. cost estimates that Jim was presenting at the last meeting, and I I actually suggested Mike has been an important part mm -hmm. of that conversation. Mm -hmm. So before we took any action, mm -hmm. we wanted to wait and get his uh, feedback on it. We also talked a little bit about perhaps uh, having uh, inviting the original solid waste committee in that was part of the recommendations mm -hmm. that said when the landfill closes, keep it as is. Mm -hmm. Had them back in mm -hmm. and have a conversation with them before we make a final decision. Oh. Um, so we have to disseminate the information to them. So what I'm hearing from you is that you're not sure if you want to continue this discussion because you, Mike hasn't had a chance to I look at it, and um, we won't have a meet. We probably won't have a meeting for a month, and that would maybe give Mike's situation uh, time to resolve itself to see whether we go forward. Everybody thinking that we can as good as this discussion until then. Mm -hmm. You guys feel okay about that? Yeah, I mean we're running, you know, basically. We, get a, we have to start making decisions, so mm -hmm. we can't wait a month and then another month and then another month. No, no, I agree. Um, so if you wait a month, then 
we all have to make decisions fairly quickly. Mhm. I think we're just gonna need time to make sure we can get everything in order. Right. Mm -hmm. So, but, but I do think that you know it. You know, our, we've been talking all along about the original projection for the the fee, the fixed fee would be seventy five dollars for your permit, mm -hmm. and then the continue the what is it, the charge per bag. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we moved this year on the recommendations. We moved to the mean space mm -hmm. as the first step without mm -hmm. increasing the, 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 the fee itself. But I think mm -hmm. that we should very quickly after the first of the year. We've been saying this all along that the cost of your sticker is going to go up, mm -hmm. and that shouldn't be a surprise to mm -hmm. people by the time it does mm -hmm. go up at the end of the year. Well, it is interesting. I noticed that while we did probably lose uh, seniors, a lot of seniors, we did not. We gained in terms of overall. Number of people buying stickers? Uh, no, we lost about a thousand customers. We lost customers, but we gained in revenue because of mm -hmm. the uh, as everybody pays the full board except for the means based. Mm -hmm. uh, so the senior discount went away. Mm -hmm. The seniors now need to pay the full price for the vehicle permit. Mm -hmm. So the revenues are up, but the number of customers is down. So okay, so I guess I didn't figure out how, how do you. How would we figure that out from the, to the permit that the dollar amount is up? So this little bar up here is uh -huh. the number of permits, total number of permits. Okay. It include, so it's residential and seniors mm -hmm. combined. Up. And mm -hmm. you can see, um, actually one thing I think is interesting is that the steepest drops happened when we increased permit mm -hmm. costs. Yeah, so people are very responsive to the permit costs. Mm -hmm. That was where I was going. For, I, for some reason, I thought it was it was m mostly seniors that we might have lost, but I guess we don't really know. So. Yeah, what I I was trying to see if we could um, figure that out. It would be very yeah. labor intensive. Yeah. Probably not worth the effort. Yeah. Because it's all manual. It's not mm -hmm. electronic. Right. You know, one interesting thing in this little spreadsheet that Karen worked up was the, uh, the the number of total permits sold and how it's dropped. I mean, it was at a high of about 1,600 <coughs> permits mm -hmm. back in, you know, fiscal year 07. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of dropped to the point where we're about 4,180 right now. So there's been a lot of uh, a lot of drop in usage anyway over time mm -hmm. because we were talking about also the, if we close Glendale Road, what the impacts of Locust Street would be. But mm -hmm. we've seen so many, we've seen such a drop in permits there was a little bit of discussion about maybe having to open on a Sunday or something, but you know I think there's been such a drop in the number of customers that we wouldn't need to, to open up on a Sunday, mm -hmm. you know, because of that. Out of curiosity, when did pedal people start their work? Mm -hmm. Anybody know offhand? I think they usually they do. just celebrate their tenth anniversary. Yes, exactly. Hmm. So, and they have been coming here from the beginning. Mm -hmm. They got the, the contract to do the downtown pickup though. That was mm -hmm. that was not too what? long ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. although that, that trash is going to the dumpster downtown, so that's not that's not being delivered here. I was just wondering. I just had the sense that they really ratcheted yeah. up their operations about three years ago is when I kinda yeah, got they, that feeling. They were too. sort of there yeah. and present, but then all of a sudden they had this growth curve that seemed to be Yeah. Just curious. Well, I mean, it's just the, the price sensitivity is a statement in itself. So if we rate, if we were triple the price, it would be interesting to see, um, uh, the, the permit price, it would be interesting to see if we can still break even according to the calculation. And we do have to remember that the permit price at Valley Recycling is not anyone can just drive in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get back to the calendar. If we had a discussion on this, would the solid, you think the solid waste test, the committee could meet um, before our next meeting on the um, January 9th? January 9th? January 9th. We didn't set a meeting date for that subcommittee. Yes, I think we could. I think you could. Okay. So I think that that way at least we would be prepared to discuss it, whether or not Mike is here to yeah. contribute, and then we could definitely put it on the agenda. But I, I think we should discuss it before we invite the rest of the task force. What does everybody else think? Great idea. Okay. I think so. Okay. So we'll have it on the next meeting. So 
got our cage, you guys. And then that would allow us to sort of get our ducks lined up and then decide what we're doing next. Mm -hmm. can, okay. can Will try to meet before that? Yeah, why don't we try to see if we can do a meeting on the Friday before that Friday? Okay. Or January 3rd. Is that okay with all that? Or January 4th. The 4th. The 4th, yeah. Does that work for you, Jeff? Yeah. Do you need anything new from me? From the staff at that, for that meeting? No. We didn't have a whole lot of any problems just for the discussion with the members. Thank you, Karen. Can we, uh, well, Karen's here, can we just do a shout out thank you that the toy exchange went really well? It's an incredible amount of volunteers. And yeah. I'm, I'm waiting for the survey results because the, the value of the material exchange was just incredible. Yeah. People were very appreciative. Excellent. And, and we also had a very successful meeting on Tuesday. Did you, that's not on the agenda, but. Uh, the the air solid waste planning. Yeah, I want to hear about that. I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I, left, I left before it was over. But Definitely. I was going to the questions. Mm -hmm. Do you want to summarize that? You're doing a good job. There was a meeting on Tuesday. We were, uh, the city was requested by a company called Ag Green Energy. Um, who's working with a couple of farms in Hadley and Deerfield to build anaerobic digestion facilities to digest manure from the farms. And they're looking to supplement the manure um, from, with other uh, organic wastes from uh, different uh, producers within the valley. So it could be um, sort of food manufacturing um, type facilities. It could be like Coke or Cabot or Agrimark. And they were looking at residential source separated food waste as a potential source. Um, some other sources of organics, I guess, to um, basically supplement the anaerobic digestion process because it, it, uh, the process produces methane. They use the methane to produce electricity. They use the electricity on the farm for what they need. They sell the balance of it to the grid, and there may be a cogen sort of offshoot um, of heat that they can use for greenhouse purposes. So it was kind of an exciting meeting. They had asked uh, Karen and I to help coordinate a meeting of different people in the valley that are interested in um, organics management. So we had about 50 people there. Oh, excellent. Um, so it was very well attended. People were pretty enthusiastic about the concept. <clears throat> and one of the, one, of the, uh, one of the important parts of the project from their perspective is the need to um, process organic material that goes into the digester. So for example, um, source separated food waste like we drop off over here at the transfer, the residents drop off at the transfer station would need to be sort of processed and um, macerated before it could be put into a, a digester because it has to do with particle size and the ability for it to be, um, to, to be digested uh, on the farm. So they're looking to, to have a processing type facility within um, within this area that would, would uh, process material that would then be delivered to Deerfield and Hadley to those farms, to those on-farm digesters. So they were here, um, they were uh, <coughs> discussing the possibility for a processing facility within the city as an option, centrally located, possibly on city property. Um, that aspect of it was sort of generically discussed. They said that Ag Green Energy does the anaerobic digesters. They said that they don't do the processing end. Um, but they were describing the need for the farmers were describing the need for um, supplemental material for the digesters to um, enhance the gas production at the digester. So it was uh, more of a uh, the meeting was built as sort of a brainstorming, get everybody that's interested and in, involved in this um, could be involved in in management of this type um, at the meeting. So the colleges were there, a lot of different communities were there. I know the Valley Planning Commission was there. The was there. Um, waste companies and haulers were there. Um, there was a chamber. Yeah, Chamber of Commerce um, was there. Department of Agricultural Resources. Right. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a you know it's an organics management model that they're excited about. They're saying that it's really the wave of the future across the country where we're trying to take a portion of uh, material food food waste and other uh, matter that has beneficials on a farm 
to somehow take this material out of the waste stream and then digest it, and then the material that comes out of the digester of the soil is fertilizer. So there's a lot of benefits, the renewable energy benefits, the benefits of having um, fertilizer that comes out of it that can be used on the farm, and organic farms in particular can use this material. So it's really sort of a closed circle way of dealing with material. Um, it's a great concept, people are very excited about it, um, and they're trying to make it work in this state, and they said there are a number, a number of other states looking at Massachusetts as a, um, sort of as a, uh, a model of what could be done. Um, on a statewide level, there's been a lot of things on organics management in terms of uh, soil separate organics waste bands at disposal facilities that will be coming into play, and the green energy programs, the Green Communities Act, a lot of these things are all coming together in such a way that these these projects like the Ag Green Energy was talking about with the farmers in Hadley and Deerfield really, you know, the state, the groundwork is set to make something like this work. And on the most basic planning level for materials management, it really makes a lot of sense. So it was a good meeting. I think this seems like there's still quite a few things that are unknown, but people are excited about it. And um, this company has, they've built uh, a couple of digesters, right? Um, one in Rutland. In Rutland. One in Rutland, Mass. So they, they have a track record. They they have uh, okay. they may have two or three others. I think. Yeah, I think they do. There's one in California. I, I, I don't know if it's theirs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so it was it was a pretty good meeting. Very I, would, I would add two things that these these projects are fully funded and they have broken ground in Hadley. So it's not you know they're not talking about a proposed thing. It's like really happening. And the other thing is that. Well, there eventually are going to be five in Western Massachusetts, but these two would be able to handle 30 to 50 tons per day of soil separate and organics. So it's a huge capacity. We need capacity materials. There was a guy from Colorado who was the World Wildlife Fund. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I thought that was kind of interesting. I didn't quite understand what his role was other than, is he gr offering grants or something? Is that what no. it was? I think it's kind of a, ne a network of, you know, a, it's support kind of project. Yeah. Yeah. And the second thing was, these guys were sort of seeing, I think, the landfill as a potential site to be a, a hub for the organic material. For processing. So it would <clears throat> potentially be a I guess you could say a new, a new business. But the processor that would be required to make this work, the, the farmers are going ahead, breaking ground to do this, but what, how are they going to get the material needed that needs to be processed? There's some material could be coming from Eastern Mass. Um, there's actually uh, some material from, from Coca-Cola's bottling plant that's getting shipped to Rutland, mm. the Rutland facility. So that could be rerouted because Hadley's just you know, across the bridge. So there's probably some local um, local material from food manufacturing and the things that might be available that are more of a liquid state that, that they could take. Does the processor have uh, odor issues? That's not what they're saying. I mean, they nothing. Never do. It's basically a physical type of separation, mm -hmm. um, macerating type of process. So if material would come in a, in an enclosed building, mm -hmm. would be processed, and then it would be you know, hauled out in, in trucks in a liquid form. And then go to the That would go to the farms. Right. I think that's the sort of one they were describing in California. It has negative air and, you know, there are ways to control mm -hmm. this food control. Okay. Anything more on this? Okay, thank you. Um, Thanks, Karen. Yeah. Yep. The, um, the meeting is, um, of the November 14, 2012 Board of Public Works meeting. Second. Any comments on that? No, there wasn't a... Did you get any response? There wasn't a quorum if anyone okay. wanted more to do it. All right. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? It's been the 7th, November 28, 2012 Aye. Board of Public Works meeting. Aye.
contract for diesel fuel for both water treatment plant is sand reincorporated in the amount of seven thousand seven hundred and thirty six dollars. This was um two of those purchases the day before Sandy came to town, Hurricane Sandy was scheduled to arrive, so we were topping up all the tanks. Uh, so we didn't have a contract in advance, so that's what this contract is covering. Thousand gallons for flood control, thousand gallons for the wastewater treatment plant for backup generators. Trying to. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Mm -hmm. Private ways. I was asked by the board at the last meeting to send a letter to all the residents. We're still trying to create the right. master mailing list for all that. Right. We work with the Office yeah. of Planning well, Development to get uh, a current download of the assessor files, and then they send that to us. So Andy Keith has been working on that. I have sent the letter out to uh, yourself and Terry. Mm -hmm. I've heard back from you, and I haven't heard from Terry on that. <laughs> but that's fine. I think it's, it's a reasonable letter. I it gives them a petition too that they can sign if they want to yeah. start the process. Yeah. And I love, I still go back to your comment that you know, we'll read to send the letter out ahead of time, even if it does get old, people mm -hmm. at least are aware of it. So. so we're tentatively still looking at January 11th okay. as a next private way walkthrough if you care to do that. Okay. I need about um, a good week and a half notice to get the letters out if we're going to do that still on January 11th. 12. 12. Yeah, that's, yeah, the, that's going, the foreign that's savings the foreign bank. Savings bank calendar. Oh, that's a, I was at foreign <laughs> savings bank the following day, and they, they thought it was hilarious. They didn't. No one had they pointed had, that. No one had pointed it out. And I said, oh. and I said, came up with the board of public works. Yeah. Last night. <laughs> and I said, I said well, what do you think we have to do? And I said, December. You know, calendars <laughs> are out. Right. Relax. <laughs> If you, the, technically you would need to know by the second or the third if we're still a, a go mm -hmm. on that January call. Yeah, uh, I'll know early in the first week of January. Um, can, is everybody comfortable? You could send out an email and yep. then we would respond if, if there's a problem with responding. Because all we have to do is say yes or no, it's not violating any public rules. Yeah, you're, you're yeah. not making any decisions, you're just right. trying to set up a meeting. I'm writing but it on my new foreign savings. <laughs> <laughs> See, what, they, what, they corrected uh, it. What do they have for January there in the 12th? Yeah. No, they forgot to put a date on the money, and so all the numbers slipped. Um, <laughs> in last year's account. In last year's account, it which doesn't really matter, right? Because Did you touch the conversation? Yeah. Right. I, I heard that. Right. <laughs> okay. I so why I'm so right. we're, yes. we're looking at January 12th as yes. a tentative. Private yeah. ways meeting. We need to make a decision by the second. Staff will send out an, an email, making sure that we have. Uh, we need to have a um, a quorum for that, right? So that there's enough people that can still do it on the twelfth. The other note that the list has grown a little bit too. Oh, I mean beyond six. Right. Uh, there was a shade tree that we were asked to look at. Um, uh, resident requested a tree inspection and. It was Golden Drive up in Florence, uh -huh. and it was the same thing like Hillcrest, approved by the planning board and built, recorded at the registry, but never accepted by city council. So we're going to have a few of those again, um, just so you're aware that the the easy ones, as I call them. Okay. 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 Great. So we'll expect that email. So are we going to do six on that day? That was what we decided. Okay. Six. Okay. I sent out a list. Of, Thirty minutes. Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. We're all in agreement on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Stormwater and flood control. I met with the mayor last Thursday with Terry and Susan Wright, and basically we, we believe that the board has taken this as far as we can take it, and now it's time for the city council to grab it and pull it through. Mm -hmm. And so the mayor was looking at setting up a committee, either a mayor committee or a city council committee, as to take the next steps on this. I have not heard anything back since that meeting. Well, we discussed it on Monday yeah. at the conference team. Right. But it still hasn't really done any no updates. Right, but as a result of it, we met when we met at the conference committee with mm -hmm. Paul Spector and mm -hmm. Jean and Jesse on Monday, mm -hmm. um, Paul and Jesse, I think, were going to bring it up and keep moving it along. They said they would. So do you think the next steps will be to uh, have a task force or will it 
will it, will that be the next step for it? We, be, we believe it will be. Yeah, yeah. I just haven't gotten a clear okay. green light what exactly, you know, exactly what's going to happen. Okay. And I think there's a little, um, there's some question about who actually appoints the, the task force now mm -hmm. that there's that change in the charter. Mm -hmm. It feels like they're sort of trying to feel out the edges of where the right. authority is. Right, right, with the charter. Yeah. Okay. Gary, do you have anything more you want to talk about? Chris, do you have anything more you want to talk about? Not a thing. Just the map on the table, which I did share with everyone with Gary, if he wants to take a look at it, but changing course of the Connecticut River over the past 170 plus years. It was 1816? 1831. 1831. Versus GIS from um, last year. Wow. Some islands disappeared, some shrunk a lot. Up. River changed substantially. Yeah. City roads now are bad. You don't, you don't have to plow a good many ferry road anymore. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Could be an ice trucker run. <laughs> Jim, do you have anything? That was the most awesome recipe. <laughs> One of my favorites. You did? No, thank you. Okay. I'm good. I'm good. Motion to adjourn. Hell yeah. You said the date, I'll bet, but I don't remember. 1831 is the grade. 31. Jeez, that's Not bad. 32 minutes, everybody. Woohoo! And, you know, it occurred to me, I could see you falling asleep, but, you know, we had to discuss about that. Okay, good. Recipe. Yeah. recipe for what? That's from so a, in the three the, the three hundred and fiftieth <laughs> anniversary of the city of Northampton, a cookbook was oh, issued. Oh, that's right. And I told Will I was at home the other night, de-stressing after the stormwater meeting, <laughs> reading yeah. recipes, and I came across the chili verde recipe from the tomatillos, and we have to have a refrigerator filled with those. And it was from Rowan Barry, and we made it. Oh. It was the most delicious chili ever. So, yeah. Huh? Really good. One of our favorites. We never get enough tomatillas, so if anybody ever has extra tomatillas. I mean, everything we pick from the farm goes really fast. Yeah. I remember that, because our, our farm share usually has them. So, which farm share? Oh, God. CSA has them in West Hampton. Sunnyside. Oh. Okay, so that is different. I mean, but we go pick them, and then we go through them, like, Mount, in the Mountainside. summer. Mountainside. Oh, Mountain View. Mountain View? Mountain View. Mountain View. Yeah. yeah, that's where I get mine, too. But, oh, darn. But okay. they're... Well, I can yeah. get you some next year. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's right at the, right at the foot of the...